um, yes, uh, please do stop your video if you do not wish to be recorded. Um, all right, I think that is the basics of Zoom. Um, so the next thing that I would say is that this event is actually a part of a series. So uh, uh, we actually started back in September with our uh, um, initial event, kind of looking uh, back into the past a bit and uh, telling the story of a PDF success story, the Women Peacemakers Initiative. So we reconvened many of the participants of the Women's Peacemakers Initiative, and uh, they had a wonderful discussion about um, about what peacemaking and feminism means uh, in this in this place and time that we find ourselves now. Uh, and then, uh, of course, tonight's event is our film premiere um, and intergenerational uh, discussion. Really looking forward to that. And then on November seventeenth, we're going to be having um, uh, another like town hall meeting. Um, it's called A Vision to Free Our Folks, Ending Incarceration of Women, Girls, and LGBTQ plus people. Um, that uh, will be November 17th at 5.30 Eastern time. So it's a little different of a time. And um, you can uh, go to our Facebook or Twitter or Instagram to find out more information about that. You can also then sign up at this tinyurl.com slash PDF 40th anniversary. And I'm pretty sure there's probably a link to it at our website too, but uh, Brennan helpfully just put it in the chat as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you to everybody who has put in your uh, your introductions in the in the chat. Some of you may recognize some folks in some of these pictures. That's fun. Um, I uh, now uh, want to turn it over to Ray Santiago, who uh, is a former PDF staff member uh, and someone that I really look up to and am so grateful to be standing on the shoulders of. Um, so Ray, if you would like to uh, introduce yourself and talk a little bit about uh, PDF's 40th anniversary. Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, welcome, everyone. And looking at the at some of these old photographs, uh, at some point I'm going to mention Kim Klein because I she was one of my uh, fundraising gurus uh, when I was both a farm worker organizer and then when I also came to uh, to the foundation world. But with PDF, I must say that uh, I remember PDF way back before I even got involved with PDF. Uh, my early life was working at other foundations, the Linux Exchange Foundation. Uh, and, uh, the Saguaro Foundation and Seven Generation Fund and us. PDF has a model where, you know, when you look at the, the, the definition of philanthropy and it talks about what, um, it, let me just quote it. The philanthropy, the desire to promote the welfare of others expressed especially by the generous donation of money to good causes. And the work of PDF is really hand in hand with the work that's going on in the community. Uh, I'm really pleased to see some of these young uh, organizations, organizers. It, it just uh, warms my heart to see the new generation of activism that's going on across this country. And I, and I think that PDF is in a great position and has been for the past 40 years to support some wonderful work. Um, you know, I was a beneficiary of some of that work when I was working at other organizations. When I came to PDF as a development person uh, to help fundraise, not only for the foundation, but also for many groups, both domestically here in the US. And also for some of you don't know, you know, work that we support in other parts of the country, in other parts of the world. Uh, after leaving PDF, I actually uh, had set up a small donor advice fund at PDF and continued to support a few of the organizations uh, that I was uh, so honored to be able to support when I was at, on staff. And uh, I guess part of my, my, my role here is to really encourage uh, many of the uh, donors that are uh, part of this uh, presentation uh, who have been past donors and the current donors and, and, and maybe some potential future donors that this is a wonderful place uh, to partner with uh, when you're looking at supporting progressive work around the country. Uh, when I mentioned earlier about Kim Klein, I just wanna, there's an old book and maybe you all probably have it. It's, it's, 
this one here. It's titled Fundraising for the Long Haul. It's one of the many books that Kim Klein and, and her uh, partners produced back in the, well, you know, going back to the 1990s. But there's a quote that ends, and I'd like to read it to you. Nonprofits that work for social change must themselves be agents of change. The ways we think about money, raise it, spend it, save it, invest it, and plan for it all, for it are some of the most basic elements for modeling the world we want to create. And I think that uh, I think that PDF has been a really wonderful example of that modeling. And I just want to end by saying something that, uh, you know, we all lost uh, a good friend and activist, uh, uh, Congress uh, Representative John Lewis from Georgia, uh, who passed away last year. And, uh, you know, one of the things he always said is the whole thing about good trouble. And I think that's what we're involved in at PDF. We're involved in good trouble. We're supporting the kind of things that many other foundations will not support. And, uh, and so I think that uh, those of you that are present in this in this uh, Zoom session, I just want to encourage you all, please, that whatever you can, you know, support PDF and uh, the work that they're doing, and is reflected by these young people that are part of the panel. I think I'll leave it at that. Thank you, Ray. And uh, just to let folks know that uh, Brennan has again helpfully uh, dropped into the chat a link to our Mighty Cause fundraiser. Um, uh, it is our 40th anniversary fundraiser, and uh, it's like a crowdfunding campaign, and you can find out more about our 40th anniversary campaign there, uh, including how uh, PDF is looking to support the uh, next generation of, uh, of organizing. Um, uh, there's also a link there to uh, our general uh, donation page uh, at our website uh, if you're interested in uh, giving to PDF more generally. Uh, as well as finding out other ways to give other than uh, uh, through a credit card. Um, okay, so now we're gonna turn to, uh, to uh, conversation with our moder moderator and panelists, and then later we'll, uh, we'll see the, the film and then have a little bit more conversation after that. Uh, so it's my great honor uh, to introdu introduce our moderator. Uh, so uh, as a 17th generation daughter of Taiwan, Yichun Trisha Lin was expected to follow a life of submission to the Confucian patriarchal order. Far from that, she lives a full life in submission to none. Today, Trisha has found her calling in liberatory teaching as director and professor of, in the women's studies, uh, sorry, women, women's and gender studies program at Southern Connecticut State University. Trisha continues uh, with the journey, working with and writing about Taiwan's indigenous feminism and co-editing books on transnational indigenous feminism. Notably for this audience, she received an award together with Teresa Juarez, PDF's board president, and Anne Rockefeller Roberts of the Fund for Four Directions. The award was the Flying Eagle Woman Fund, Peace, Justice, and Sovereignty Award, named for the late Ingrid Washington, excuse me, Washington El Isa. We are so lucky to have her as a member of the board of directors for the Peace Development Fund and as tonight's moderator. Very good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Emily. And thank you the entire mighty, uh, tiny PDF staff. Um, it's a tremendous honor to say the very least. Um, I will be uh, moderating the session and uh, what we, let me, uh, let me begin by uh, doing a very brief land acknowledgement and I hope you will do the same from wherever you are. I'm speaking to you from the traditional unceded trad homelands of the Pocasset and the Quinnipiac people um, in Southern uh, New England. And, um, mm -hmm. and I think PDF work, um, you know, acknowledges that as well, that we stand and work on indigenous land. 
And tonight we have a extraordinary um, panel of, um, of activists, practitioners, movement makers with a combined a few centuries of uh, you know dedication and service to movements and justice causes, and I would also say that uh, with a probably a many more centuries of uh, work promised to come with our youth um, uh, speakers on tonight, I am putting uh, here um, in chat the list of the uh, speakers. Um, what I'm going to do instead of introducing every one of them is inviting them uh, to say briefly um, who they are and what their connection to PDF is. And then after this segment, then we will, uh, we will have about half an hour of a conversation about the intergenerational work, about the future of uh, movement organizing and uh, public interest funding like PDF. Um, so, I believe that um, what I'm going to do is, since there's, there's a sort of an order that I list here, so may I invite Reverend Dr. Uh, Adrian Avazian. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy to be here. And I use she, her pronouns. I am on the unceded land of the Nipmunk. Uh, and the Nanatuck people, I'm in Western Massachusetts. My connection to PDF goes back to the 1980s. During that time, I was the director of the exchange program. And uh, what we did is that, and I know that we have PDF people here from many generations on this screen. At that time when there was a grant given to, um, grassroots organizations working for peace and justice, they also got workshops. And I led a team of people who crisscrossed the country and offered workshops on board development, strategic planning, avoiding burnout, um, anti-racism. We did workshops uh, crisscrossing the country. I am, as Tricia said, an ordained pastor in the United Church of Christ. I'm also the founder and director of the Sojourner Truth School for Social Change Leadership. So have never really traveled very far from my commitments, values, and roots in PDF values. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you very much. Alphabetically, uh, Lori Goodman. Hi, my name is Lori Goodman and um, a former um, board member of Peace Development Fund. And I uh, live in Durango, Colorado, um, you know, the lands of, uh, former lands of the Apache, you and the Ne people. So, and um, I worked for over 30 years with, uh, uh, I was one of the co-founders of uh, the Nest Citizens Against Ruining Our Environment, working on the Navajo Reservation. And the work consisted of uh, how our people are, were, still are, um, you know, uh, I guess, uh, worked over by the energy companies. We have, uh, so the work that we did uh, or doing is all on um, trying to get people moving to renewable energy instead of coal mining and uh, power plants uranium so um and so our work consisted of uh, amending the radiation exposure compensation act in 19 uh in 2000 and um also um working to protect our uh sacred lands so um our work entail you know, educating our people on, you know, what what the issues were while, you know, uh, there was clear cutting and we had uh, Pacific, uh, uh, Northwest Pacific uh, people that were controlling our land, cutting all our trees. We only have 
uh, two percent of our whole land has trees and they were cutting down. So just doing um, advocacy work all these years. And I got to know in, in that work and working, uh, reaching out with other organizations. And, and that's how I met um, Ray Santiago, early 90s, uh, 1990s, and Teresa uh, Juarez. And, uh, you know, Ray, Ray and Teresa got me on the uh, funding exchange board <laughs> and then to um, Peace Development Fund. So uh, a lot of education and a lot of uh, sharing. And uh, it, I really saw how um, the model that Peace Development has is all about, um, it, it, it's like um, partnerships, relationships, building relationships. So that is uh, clearly different. I had never seen that. And, you know, I, I started uh, fundraising just, you know, for our organization uh, from all the things that I learned from Peace Development Fund. So anyway, thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. I had the extraordinary honor of serving with Lori on uh, PDF board for um, her um, last two years. And we miss you, Lori. Um, is Dr. Mildred McLean in the room? Okay, well, uh, with that, it, then we are going to invite our Deum uh, uh, colleagues, uh, fierce leaders to share with us their work. Um, Julia Cunio. And then after that will be uh, uh, Nazifa Kadir. Thank you so much for having us here. Um, hi everyone, I'm Julia. I use she or they pronouns. I am here based in Detroit um, uh, at Waliatna, which is where the water goes around, um, right here, known to the Anishinaabe people um, as one, one land with Windsor, Canada. Um, and I am the strategic coordinator for DAM, Detroit Area Youth Uniting Michigan, which is um, a really unique organization because it is <laughs> entirely run by high school students. Uh, our board of directors are all high school students. Our membership are all high school students. We have an adult advisory board who meet with them once a month at the most, and then myself, who my job is to connect them to resources, tools, training, and ideas um, to make their campaigns and their visions happen. Um, so they run our organization and they tell us what kinds of issues they want to work on. It's really um, emergent and it's really exciting because <laughs> I never really know what they're going to say. Um, I often joke that my life changes suddenly with a text that says, uh, oh my gosh, I can't believe my school just did this. And <laughs> all of a sudden we're off. Um, so it's, it's a really fun and great place. And I, I love uh, our family and I will pass it on to Nazifa to talk a little bit more about um, the youth side of things. Hi everyone, um, I'm Nazifa, my pronouns are she, hers. Um, I'm the newly elected treasurer for DAM. I think I joined DAM last year, especially like during COVID season. And it has a lot to do with our school and it not being prepared for like the students and just uh, adapting to us being virtual. So it has a lot to do with that. And a lot of the students didn't know what to do. And we thought we were kind of stuck with this situation and we have no solutions to it. So I kind of met, I met Dam through my friends. And over here, we just like, kind of like Julia said, we just complain in a group chat sort of. But with the complaints, we just have like, it's a way for us to vet and then find solutions to our problems. And it's just, uh, we work together to see how we can best benefit ours because Ultimately, Dan believes that the decisions for the youth should be made by the youth, not by adults who usually won't be that impacted by those decisions. So that's one of our like main focus on Dam is trying to get the power back to the youth. Uh, some of the some of the recent things we've done, um, we've been to a recent district board meeting. Uh, so 
there basically we kind of tell our demands and try to just talk to the district about what we want and what changes we want. We also, during COVID, we came out with the Bill of Rights, the online Bill of Rights, which is something I'm really excited about or really like doing. Um, it was so we came up with a list of rights that most of these students are well obligated to, and we just kind of felt ignored during them. So we just came up with a list of rights that all the students have, have as a student. Um, it's just really like working with different people and just networking with different people and just a lot of people go through similar experiences as you and you get to learn this through like youth programs. So, Thank you so much, Nazifa. I uh, apologize. I kind of uh, gave everyone a preview of Anika's bio. Anika, uh, take it away. No worries at all. Hi, everyone. My name is Anika Manzor. My pronouns are she, they. I'm the executive director of the Youth Activism Project. Um, I guess I can uh, elaborate a little bit more on my bio. Um, I actually um, got involved in activism at the age of 12. And I say I accidentally co-founded the first campaign of, of the nonprofit that I lead, the Youth Activism Project, um, because uh, prior to um, meeting the founder of the organization, I didn't know anything about activism. And I think what's really key is um, a lot of young people get involved in activism because like a lot of people, a lot of young people who look like me, for example, who um, grew up um, as a person of color, didn't really feeling like we have um, a voice that matters, a, a civic power. Um, it, it's really important to invite um, folks of color, uh, specifically young folks of color, um, to this space. And so that's really how I got my um, feet with activism, how I uh, spent my adolescence um, uh, lobbying uh, on Capitol Hill um, for foreign aid for education, which is the issue I was focusing on. And so I'm leading the Youth Activism Project today to really scale our approach so that we can support other young folks um, all across the country to, to lead impactful advocacy and organizing campaigns. And I'll go ahead and pass it on to Amari, who is leading one of our, our most successful campaigns. Hi, everyone. My name is Amari Mbongwa. Um, I use she, her pronouns. And I'm a part of the student-led um, advocacy group called, um, sorry, Montgomery County Students Towards Equitable Public Schools, or STEPS. And um, we're a group based in Montgomery County, and we focus on making education equitable for students who look like me or students whose voices are not uplifted in our public schools and MCPS. Um, and we have received so much support from the Youth Activism Project. And we've, I've learned so much from just like, um, like skills and training and lobbying and et cetera with the help of the Youth Activism Project. So we've been able to make change such as removing SROs from um, public schools who are our black and brown students. Thank you so much. Um, as you see, we, we could really use a whole next hour for a conversation. Uh, given the fact that we have a very full meal after this uh, entree, we have uh, yet another big dish, uh, which is the, uh, the film. So I'm going to move us uh, to a question, uh, inviting all of you to, um, to think and to offer your thoughts, insight, and uh, your visions about it. So um, it, it's a kind of two-part question, but ultimately comes back to cross-generational organizing. So where do you see the social justice and peace movement right now? What are some of the challenges and opportunities? And uh, how do you see cross-generational organizing um, may uh, could play a role in the uh, peace and justice movement work? So uh, this is uh, for anyone in on this panel. Uh, 